Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Carrie and today I am doing my July haul. I probably bought, well, I did buy too many books, but in my defense, I have no defense. Half of the books I'm about to show you I got from a colleague who is moving, was moving, she's moved now, out of town and so she needed to get rid of several of her books because she was downsizing. She and I bonded over books originally and so she knew that I would probably want several and turns out I did, I got a whole bunch. But let's start with the book I am actually holding, which is Dark Age by Pierce Brown. This is rather a large book but it is beautiful and it is the fifth in the Red Rising saga, the second in the second trilogy of the Red Rising series. I have not read it yet, I was planning on it but I only just finished Iron Gold again so there's that. This is a science fiction and we start in Iron Gold ten years after the events of Morningstar. I'm very curious where we're going in this one. I'm a little scared but I'm planning on reading it sometime in the next month or so as soon as I get past the other 12 books that I have sitting on my bedside table. Not the point. Bought this one. Right, and then my colleague gave me these six books, which are all a series, and they are Mr. Churchill's Secretary, Princess Elizabeth's Spy, His Majesty's Hope, The Prime Minister's Secret Agent, Mrs. Roosevelt's Confidant, and The Queen's Accomplice, all by Susan, where'd your name go? Susan Elia McNeil. These are World War II mysteries, basically. I love me a good mystery. I'm aware that there are World War II mysteries out there. I don't know that I really knew of any before I saw this series, or was given this series rather, but I'm excited to get into these. I'm not sure when, obviously, but I'm intrigued, so I will hopefully be getting to one of these soon. Next we have The Elephant Keeper by Christopher Nicholson. This is a prior library book that I bought. Again, I go once a week and buy a dollar book. It is England, 1766, and oh, we have a mermaid, a zebra, a leopard, and a baboon, and some elephants. And clearly somebody has to keep the elephants alive because they tried keeping an ostrich alive at some point during Georgian times and they fed him nails and he died because you don't feed an ostrich nails, but how are they supposed to know that? It's England and 1700s and it just, anyway, trying to keep elephants alive and it sounded good. I also got The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Sloot. I have heard many, many things about this book. It is a nonfiction about Henrietta, Henrietta Lacks whose cells were used to clone. Her cells became, yep, polio vaccine, cloning, gene mapping, etc. Uh, nobody knows her because she was black and this was the 1950s. So. We're doing well. But as hard a topic as racism is, I've heard that it's a fantastic book and really brings the issues to light with respect to her life specifically. Then my cousin came down in early July, I think it was technically the third weekend, sort of, anyway, and we went to Barnes & Noble because we were going to the mall and I saw Serafina and the Seven Stars by Robert Beatty, which is the fourth in his Serafina series. Loved the first three. So obviously I had to get this one. I didn't even know it was coming out. I just saw it and I got very excited. So as soon as I finish the books on my nightstand, I will hopefully be diving into this and continue the story. I also bought The Evil Queen by Gina Showalter. This one I've actually already read and I gave it I think a 4.5 out of 5, maybe a 5. This is a retelling of The Evil Queen story and basically our world is sort of an alternate universe to the fairy tale worlds, but you can go between them. And our main character finds out that she is prophesied to become the evil queen and is determined she will not become it. And you follow her through this entire saga of her fighting not to become the evil queen. I loved the twists that this author put on the evil queen story. But that's all I will say for now and I'll talk about it in my August wrap up. My colleague also gave me The Dark Days Pact and The Dark Days at Club by Alison Goodman. These are, I want to say something about steampunk, Scandal's Ball, Fashionable Resort of Brighton. The main character's training is a reclaimer. You know what would make sense? 
read the first one's synopsis before I read the second one. That would make sense. There we go. London 1812. She's on the eve of her debut presentation at the court of George III. Wasn't George III dead by 1812? When did that go keel over? Um, and then there's demons. So that could be fun. She also gave me Dust Tracks on a Road, an autobiography by Zora Neale Hurston. This is an account of the author's rise from childhood poverty in the rural south to a place of prominence in the pantheon of American writers, according to the back. I have never heard of this woman in my life, but I'm always down for new things. And then we have No No Boy by John Okada. Don't know what this is either. Let's see. That doesn't help me. That tells me... Ooh, that's unfortunate. Poor guy. Well, there is no synopsis of this, but it sounded interesting when she pitched it, so I took it. I also got the Haiku Handbook, because we had talked about haikus, and she bought a book and then didn't like it, so I thought I'd take it, and if I don't like it, I'll get rid of it. Also, The Color Purple by Alice Walker, which I have read and thought it was one of the weirdest things I have ever read in my life, barring Beloved, because Beloved is just a whole other thing. To be fair, I read it when I was 17, so I think maybe I have to reread it and maybe I'll get more out of it, but I just... It was weird. Anyway, read the color purple already, I just wanted to own it, so there's that. Uh, she also gave me Civil Disobedience by Henry David Thoreau. I have not read this, I know who Thoreau is, he's kind of big in English classes in the States. Uh, he's known, I believe, for living next to a lake for like a year, for no apparent reason that I can discern. But He's apparently a philosopher of some sort. I could be butchering it because he didn't really interest me that much, but I'm interested in reading him because I think it's interesting to read what other people have to say. Then I got Henry James' uh, Watch and Ward. It's a classic by Henry James. Have I read anything by Henry James? No, but I do own Henry Fielding by him, so at some point I'll get around to this as well. I have The Other House by Henry James. Also don't know what that one's about. And I have In Search of Mother's Gardens by Alice Walker. This is apparently womanist prose. I have not heard that term. Huh. I should probably keep those together. Anyway, I don't know if this is... Oh, it's a collection of nonfiction. So this could be interesting. Maybe it'll give me some insight into the color purple. I also got Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston. I'm not gonna lie, I got this because I saw, I think it's the third book's cover, and I really liked it more than I like this one. I think it's beautiful. So I'm gonna read this and then work my way through the series just to get the cover of the third one. Um, I'm not really sure what this one's about. Science fiction. Drifting through space, there's a fearsome space captain and there's illegal metals, whatever the devil those are, and there's a quest to find coordinates to a lost ship that could offer all the answers and something goes wrong, obviously. It's YA science fiction. I also got The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. This is a graphic novel about, well, Prince and the Dressmaker, obviously. That's about all I know. I got it from Joss over at Squibbles Reads. And by got it, I mean she recommended it in one of her videos and I thought it sounded good, so I bought it. I believe this has LGBTQ plus representation. As I mentioned, I also got The Dragon's Curse by Bethany Wiggins. This one I talk about in my July wrap-up. I also mentioned that I went to Minneapolis for a read-in during the not the Booktubeathon, the Reading Rush, and we went to a bookstore called Moon Place... Moon Place Gardens? Moon Place Books? Moon Palace. There we go. Moon Palace Books. Obviously, after we had done the whole introduce, reading, talk about our books thing, we went back inside the bookstore and all looked around, and most of us left with at least one. Turns out I left with four, because I have a tough problem. But this is one of the four. The Blue Fairy Book by Henry... whoops, by Andrew Lang, illustrated by Henry Ford. Not the Model T for a different guy. This is a collection of fairy tales. As you may have thought, I love reading different fairy tales and it's got some really pretty illustrations in it as well. So I thought, why not? And I bought it. I also bought The New Silk Roads by Peter Frankopin. I loved his book, The Silk Roads. And this one is... Well, it says, all roads used to lead to Rome, now they lead to Beijing. So argues Peter Frankopin in his revelatory new book. So that's where this one is. This one is more modern. The first one, the, new, uh, the Silk Roads, was how the original Silk Roads, what we think of when we think Marco Polo, 
helped to change the course of history and how they themselves were influenced by it. This is today's Silk Roads and what that means. I also bought The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. This is racism and segregation in the States. Yay! Light topic. This has been on my list for a long time because as an American I need to know these things so that I can help fix it and so that we don't ever ever go back there again, although don't get me started on that. So this is nonfiction. It is a groundbreaking investigation into how US governments in the 20th century deliberately imposed racial segregation on metropolitan areas nationwide. And once I've gone through how the economy is going to crash and racism is still rampant, I can read Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett, which is an adult fantasy that I have heard nothing but good things about. And there is a thief who is sent to send steal an artifact of unimaginable power that could revolutionize the magical technology. And then somebody wants her dead, because shock. That's about all I know. I genuinely don't know much. All I know is that I've heard really, really good things about it, and so I've been looking at it and thought I might as well get it if I'm here. And I can support an independent bookstore. Come to think of it, that wasn't all that bad. I didn't buy that many. I got a lot. I didn't buy that many. Anyway, that's me rationalizing. I hope you enjoy it. Tell me if you've read or want to read or whatever any of these books, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!